Thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to address you and to SOS Malta for organising this conference. That Europe finds itself at the front of the storm is not something new. However, rarely have we faced the concurrent challenges posed by unprecedented migration flows, a refugee crisis on our doorstep, more deaths in our seas, instability in Libya, volatility in North Africa and the devastating war in Syria. The Syrian war and the rise of ISIS in the country has meant that millions of children, women and men have been forced to flee to safer territories. There are still states in sub-Saharan Africa that are still unable to offer their future to people there. Europe, the European Union, every member state has a responsibility along with all the countries in the region to share the challenges and come up with a coherent and concrete response that helps address this multifaceted crisis. This is after all and we need to agree that it is a global crisis that requires a worldwide solution. Countries like Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey have taken in millions of refugees and Europe needs to do much better. We already have the UNHCR that runs a global resettlement program. We need this, however, to be reinforced and we need states to step up. At the moment, we have the EU Africa Summit in Malta taking place. I hope that this will be different, but we have been here before. Let's face it, we have had many summits, but I really hope that this one would be different. What we need now is concrete action concrete commitments from Prime Ministers that do not disappear simply whenever the media spotlight fades. I have repeated this as a Member of Parliament time and again. Unless we have a holistic, all-encompassing approach that looks at every single aspect of migration, we will not get anywhere. And this is what we are doing here in the European Parliament. Because migration cannot be looked at from any single aspect, but needs a holistic approach that tackles all the sides of this very complicated issue. In the Parliament, we will try, as I said, to answer questions as to where the EU's money is going in order to help countries in Africa get back on their feet. How can we boost search and rescue? How can we dismantle the crime networks from profiting? How can people seek protection without being forced onto unseaworthy boats? And finally, how do we return those who are not eligible for protection in Europe? Working on such a holistic report in the European Parliament has more than ever brought home the very real and very human challenges surrounding the migration debate and at the same time the hurdles and the risks faced by people in search of protection. We sometimes, very often, get lost in statistics when talking about migration because it is perhaps too easy to forget that behind every number there is a life. As politicians, we have a duty to look, to look beyond our five-year term and lay the foundations for a long-term, lasting approach that looks beyond what we are doing today. It is about addressing the push factor in the long term. If there is no future in countries of origin, then people will continue to flee irrespective of the risk to their lives and more people will continue to die crossing the desert or in our seas. But the question we are asked, where do we start from? In the long term, we need to give greater impetus to the geopolitical issues that affect the root causes of migration. War, poverty, corruption, hunger, and the lack of opportunity, that this all means that people will still feel forced to flee to Europe unless we look at how to help rebuild these countries. And that ultimately means putting our money where our mouth is and helping to build capacity in third countries. It means helping investment and education in those countries. It means helping to build solid border guard and law enforcement there. It is true that these are long-term options, but we needed to start yesterday. The people I have spoken to want to return to their home countries, but they cannot because there is no future for them there. And we need to see how Europe can address this issue for those persons who want to go back. And we need to look at where Europe's money is going. Are our development funds being used in the best way? Should these funds be tied to certain obligations by the states we are giving them to? How can these be best targeted? We want to, yes, create safe and legal routes to Europe for those in need of protection. Because otherwise, how can we ensure 
that people can find ways to Europe in a manner that is both manageable and organised and that does not fall into traffickers' hands for these vulnerable people. We need to do much more to go after the trafficking networks who prey on the most vulnerable. The European Union has launched what was called eu naf med or Operation Sophia, precisely by using military assets in the Mediterranean. This is a good start, but we need to operate closer to the Libyan shore, and that ultimately means that we need a government in Libya. But such an operation is still a welcome start. In a nutshell, this is the first aspect of the issue. Now in Europe, we also need to look at what happens to people in need of protection who are already on our territory. Fortress Europe is not the answer. We are about breaking down barriers, not creating new walls. We should face down the populists and address the scaremongering in this regard. But neither should Europe be about abandoning our external border controls. We need effective border management that is humane, just and strong. However, that also allows those in need of protection to seek a future without fear and we need to work on our edu education in order to ensure the smoothest possible transition. So while we need greater solidarity with refugees, we also need greater solidarity between member states. The Dublin regulation, we all agree, has failed. This is a legislative instrument that is unjust and in this regard I am very pleased that the European Commission has listened to us and that has, has announced a far-reaching review of the legislation in the coming months. I would like Dublin to be revised precisely to include a binding permanent relocation mechanism that would mean that states facing an emergency would be able to distribute people in need of protection among all member states and that therefore those on the periphery or facing the brunt, brunt will, not be, will not have to face this alone. Only then, only then can we claim that we are a true union of values. Finally, we have to understand that Europe's resources are not unlimited and we have a duty to use them on those who are in need of protection. Those who are not eligible must be returned safely and swiftly to their countries of origin. Having an effective system of return would also serve as a deterrent to those trafficking gangs who use the lack of a coherent return policy in order to attract more vulnerable people who make the difficult journey only to be sent back once they get here. There is a lot that needs to be done, but I am more optimistic than I have ever been since I have become a member of the European Parliament. The political landscape has changed, but ultimately we need to keep up the pressure and set the tone for Europe's policies on migration for the years to come. Let's do as President Juncker told us, let's have more Europe and let's have more union. At the moment we are still far away from that. Thank you.